Hi guys, this is IGCSC O level chemistry paper 22 March 2018 question 1. Hydrogen chloride reacts with ammonia to form solid ammonium chloride. The apparatus is set up as shown. After a few minutes, solid ammonium chloride forms where the two gases meet. Okay, so this is closer to HCl than it is to ammonia. The experiment is repeated using hydrogen bromide. HBr in place of hydrogen chloride. How far along the tube does the solid ammonium bromide form? So, solid ammonium bromide would form closer to the source of hydrogen bromide, which would be a, because the MR of hydrogen bromide is much greater than that of ammonia, so hydrogen bromide would move a lesser distance, whereas ammonia would move a greater distance. Therefore, option A is the correct option for this question. Question 2. Substance L melts at minus 7 degrees Celsius and is a brown liquid at room temperature. Which temperature is the boiling point of pure L? So since it melts at minus 7, at minus 77, it will be a solid. At between minus 7 to plus 7, it would be a liquid because it is a liquid at room temperature, which is 25 degrees Celsius. At 59 degrees Celsius, it has to be a gas. But at 107 to 170, it will definitely be a gas because the melting point of water is 0 degrees Celsius and the boiling point is 100. So this range is greater than the boiling point of water. So the boiling point of substance L has to be at 59 degrees Celsius, making option C the correct option for this question. Question 3. Chromatography is done on a mixture containing a drug. The drug has an RF value of 0 0.66. The diagram is not drawn to scale. Which spot on the chromatogram represents the drug? So, in order to find out that uh, spot which corresponds to an RF value of 0 0.66, 0 0.66 would mean that it covers 60% of the area of the paper from the baseline till the solvent front. So spot D is on the baseline, so it cannot be D. Spot C is very closely away from the baseline, it cannot be it. Spot B is almost greater than 50% away from the baseline and spot A is very close to the solvent front, so it is almost 80% away from the baseline. So we need to test for B. So in order to check for B, we will calculate the RF value as the distance traveled by B would be 9.9, .9, but we subtract 0 0.66 from it because that is, no, we don't subtract 0 0.6. This is from the baseline. So subtraction of 0 0.66 is not a requirement here. So the distance from the baseline till spot B is 9.9 .9 centimeter and the distance from the baseline till the solvent front is 15 centimeters. So this would give us a value of 0 0.66 for the RF value making option B the correct option for this question. Question four, cesium is an element in group one of the periodic table. When cesium reacts, it forms a positive ion CS positive. How is a cesium ion formed? A cesium atom gains a proton. No, transfer of protons do not happen. A cesium atom gains an electron, then the charge would be CS negative, not CS positive. A cesium atom loses an electron, yes. By loss of an electron, it forms a CS positive ion. So the equation would be CS forming CS positive plus electron. So this shows that the electron is lost. And a cesium atom shares an electron, then a covalent compound would form, not a cesium ion. Therefore, option C is the correct option for this question. Question 5. The structure of copper is described as a lattice of positive ions in a sea of electrons. Which statements are correct? 
copper has a high melting point because of the strong electrostatic attraction between the positive ions and the sea of electrons yes because the attraction between the positive ions and the sea of electrons is what is known as the metallic bond and the greater the metallic bond strength the greater the melting point so this statement is correct next copper is malleable because the layers of atoms in the lattice can slide over each other yes that is the reason why all metals are malleable and next copper atoms can be oxidized to form copper ions by losing electrons yes oxidation is loss of electrons so when electrons are lost from copper atoms copper ions are formed which are positively charged since all statements are correct option a is the correct option for this question question 6 three statements about diamond graphite and silicon four oxide are listed diamond and graphite both have giant covalent structures yes silicon four oxide also has a giant covalent structure in silicon four oxide silicon and oxygen atoms are joined together by covalent bonds throughout the whole structure yes that is correct diamond and silicon four oxide have similar structures yes they both have a hexagonal arrangement of atoms so since all three statements are correct option a is the correct option for this question question seven the concentration of hydrochloric acid solution is 0 0.5 mole per dm cube how many moles of hydrochloric acid are present in 25 cm cube of this solution so since the concentration is 0 0.5 moles in 1000 cm cube how many moles would be present in 25 cm cube of the solution so this would become 25 upon 1000 into 0 0.5 giving us a value of 0 0.0125 moles making option a the correct option for this question question 8 a sample of an iron oxide contains 50.4 grams of iron and 21.6 grams of oxygen what is the empirical formula of the iron oxide so we have iron and we have oxygen present so in order to calculate the empirical formula first we would divide the mass of iron and the mass of oxygen by their mr values 56 for iron and 16 for oxygen this would give us the moles of iron as 0 0.9 and the moles of oxygen as 1.35 now we divide this by the smaller number which is 0 0.9 so we will end up with a value of 1 for iron and 1.5 for oxygen so when we multiply these values by 2 in order to convert them into whole numbers we end up with a value of 2 for iron and 3 for oxygen making the empirical formula Fe2O3 which is why option Fe2O3 which is why option C is the correct option for this question. Question 9. A solution of copper to sulfate can be electrolyzed using copper electrodes or carbon electrodes. Which statements are correct? Using copper electrodes, oxygen gas forms at the anode. Uh, using copper electrodes. No, 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 no. Using copper electrodes, copper 2 plus ions will be formed at the anode, not oxygen gas. So one is incorrect. Two, using copper electrodes, copper atoms lose electrons at the anode. Yes, Cu2 positive ions form. Using carbon electrodes, copper metals forms at the cathode. Yes. Copper ions are reduced to copper metal and deposit at the cathode. Using carbon electrodes, copper ions gain electrons at the cathode. Yes, it's a cathode reduction happens, so there is gain of electrons. So since statements 2, 3, and 4 are correct, option C is the correct option for this question. Question 10. Pairs of metals are connected together to make a simple cell as shown. The table shows a reading on the voltmeter when different metals are used. So, beryllium with cerium is plus 0 0.64, with cobalt is minus 1.57, with manganese is minus 0 0.67. The greatest difference in value is with cerium and cobalt, which is minus 2.21.
and the least difference is 0 0.64, which is beryllium and cerium. Okay. If metal 2 is more reactive than metal 1, metal 2 is more reactive than metal 1, the voltage measured is positive. If metal 2 is more reactive than metal 1, okay. The greater the difference in reactivity of metal, the larger the reading on the voltmeter. What is the order of reactivity? Okay. So, if metal 2 is more reactive than metal 1, the reading is positive. So, we have a positive reading at cerium. So, that means cerium is more reactive than beryllium. And then we have a positive reading at for manganese and cobalt. So, manganese is more reactive than cobalt. So, these are two of the conclusions that we can draw from the given table. So, that means metal 1 is more reactive than metal 2 now. So, we have a reading of minus 1.57 so beryllium is more reactive than cobalt. Beryllium is more reactive than cobalt. Then we have beryllium being more reactive than manganese. Then we have cerium more reactive than cobalt. Then we have cerium more reactive than manganese. Okay, so with this, we can now find out the order of reactivity. So, cerium is more reactive than beryllium, manganese. In fact, out of all of these conclusions, there is no conclusion in which cerium is on the right. That means cerium is the most reactive element. So, this eliminates options C and D, and we will continue with options A and B. Now, the next element would be Beryllium, because beryllium is the only element that is less reactive than cerium. It is more reactive than cobalt. It is more reactive than manganese. So beryllium would be the next one. And after beryllium, we would have... Now let's find out the one that is the least reactive because we are left with two metals and the one that is only on the right and never on the left is the least reactive. So manganese can be seen on the left and the right. But cobalt is always seen on the right, never on the left. So cobalt is the least reactive. Therefore, the third metal would be manganese. And this would make option B the correct option for this question.